Good afternoon, hello, it's Connie from Faf Designs and we are on part four, I think, of the Pine Cabinet Makeover. So today we are going to be decoupaging, which is probably the bit that you've all been anticipating, eagerly waiting for. So say hi if you're on. So to the US people, good morning. To the Australian folks, good evening or night. And to the UK people, it's good afternoon. Um, so I am here in my little workshop today with this pie cabinet. The kids are also here. Hi Liz, so is the other half. So <coughs> there will be background noise. Um, but we are here today doing this decoupage with the rice papers from Dixie Bell. So to recap on the cabinet behind, I have painted, so first of all, which I didn't do on camera because it was a bit high Tara, it was a bit of a manky old job, was to strip the wax off this old pine cabinet. That's an horrible job. So that's the first thing I did. It was cleaned. Hi, Sarah. I'm good today. Thank you. Are you? Hello, Jackie. Hello, hello. Um, stripped the, the, strip the wax off the pine cabinet. Cleaned it twice with white lightning because it was gunky and it was a bit old and there was lots of tannins coming through. The frame and the sides round here were painted on previous lives with a base coat of peacock. And then we did a wash yesterday. I forget what I did. I did three lives yesterday. One in the silk mineral paint group, one on the Dixie Bell page, which is a it's a it's a really busy page, and then one on my own page. So <coughs> I forget forgot what the hell's going on to be honest. Um so a base of peacock and then we did some um over the top we did a wash of antebellum blue which i continued around the front here just to add a little bit of tone and a little bit of depth to the flat color this has been painted with two coats of boss white boss to stop any bleed through that might occur from the pine ply boards it's only like a board in I was tempting fate then, make the dogs bark. Um, so I didn't want any bleed through to happen when we are going to be um, decoupaging on top. I wanted it to stay a true white colour background to allow the vibrant colours of the rice paper to uh, basically shine through on here. So that's what we're going to be doing today. I've got a little audience. Do you want... Nancy's here. She's dying. <laughs> this is this is Nancy. <laughs> She's shy. Go on then. I'm not sure where the boy is. Um, you're only with me for 30 minutes. No problem. I don't know how long it'll go on for because my tripod doesn't actually go any lower than that. Um, the boy is also here. Are you coming to say hello? You have to come here, though. They can't see you. My, don't kick the tripod. Come here. Hey, this nice. is the boy. Oh, did Emily see Nance? Emily, Donna's watching and Emily saw you. Hi, Emily. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it's not a school reunion. Now, go on. Yeah. <laughs> and this is the boy. This is Herbie. So, Nancy is... How old are you, Nance? Eight. Nancy's eight. And Herbie is... Four. Four. Are you eating there, son? Yeah, as usual. Uh, so, they're the kids. They finally made an appearance. Um, it, it is the boy. Emily waved, she waved. <laughs> Nancy went. <laughs> um, so, <clears throat> the first thing that I'm going to do with the decoupage paper, can you see the border around here? Obviously, there's some barcode and writing that tells you... Um, DixieBellPaint.com, Bells and Whistles branding. Uh, we don't, we don't want that. We don't want that on there. They are adorable, Patsy. I'm gonna say like 85% of the time, adorable. The rest of the time, um, not so adorable. You can see him getting the train stuck in his hair. Yeah, he's got long hair, hasn't he? I actually. 
we cut it last summer myself i cut it with a one of those things you know like a shaver thing i'm not a shaver you know what i mean one of those and um it he looked a bit like he should have been in prison it, it did not suit him uh yeah monsters definitely sarah um so i've let it grow and i actually really really like it hello laura you're all right feral they are didn't you see them so the first thing i'm going to do is trim this off here um trim this white border now actually hang on where are we it's a little bit wider than no it's not is it just so it should just fit in that panel i'm hoping anyway i'm just going to trim this edge off here like so are you making me a brew he's buggered off isn't he hello bella hi you're not late i'm not really um I'm not doing a lot at the minute i'm just trimming the border off here uh he does he does look adventurous doesn't he he does look mischievous and that's because he is and he's at home today as well should be making himself useful and making me a cup of tea, but he's disappeared. <laughs> yeah, they are feral. They've just dripped water all the way through my workshop. I'm not sure what they were up to, to be honest. Uh, and I nearly went skidding through my workshop because my workshop's got tiles on the floor, stone tiles. Um... I nearly, well, that would have been half an injury and half. You've just had your first, oh, you just had your first delivery of transfers and papers. How exciting. What, what did you, um, what, win, which, what, which one, what one, what ones did you go for? Because I, I've got them all. Um, and that's a bad thing because there's too much choice. So I look at my cupboard when I've started a new project. I look at my cupboard. It was only water, Donna. Yeah, it was. <laughs> Although anything's possible, but I definitely know it was water because there's a watering can now in my kitchen. There's drips of water all the way through, all the way to outside, and then there's a bucket of water on the on the decking out there. <sighs> so yeah, I nearly went. Um, flat on my backside so there's not much going on and i should have probably done this before i came on camera however just before i was actually uh going live what i was doing was ramming a cheese and beetroot sandwich in my face <laughs> um so that's what i was doing uh hi hello 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 um i don't think i've missed any comments let me just double check I've got a dog down here. Okay, so I'm hoping you can see this. We're going to be using Dixie Bell's Gator Hide to stick this on. So, obviously, I don't know if you guys have noticed as well, the really, really clever thing about these rice papers is that you can tile them. So they are, um, if you're going to fall, please do it on a live. Ugh, can you just get off my page? You're so horrible. Um, so if you haven't noticed, the papers, they continue horizontally and they also continue vertically. So the patterns match up, which is genius because so many rice papers and, and napkins um, and things, cheese and beetroot, what's your beef with cheese and beetroot? It's a good sandwich filler. Um... So many papers sort of have a nice pattern, but then when you try and join them, it's not the same. It doesn't continue. So, um, oh, he's tiptoeing around now. That means trouble. So this is going to work perfectly for me because I obviously want the pattern to continue all the way down the panelling. Um, this is 
Just, what are you doing, Herbie? Okay. So that is just, can you see, can you just pick it up? There's like, not even a centimetre where the pattern doesn't, where the pattern doesn't um, reach, where the width of the paper doesn't meet, meet the edge, meet the edge. So I'm glad I ordered extra paper because I'm going to have to cut a sliver of the pattern so that I get the coverage of the whole panel, which is ever so slightly annoying. But there we go. So, <coughs> this is just one way of doing decoupage. There's loads of different ways. I'm just going to give the white panel a quick scuff sand because basically, the, the, obviously the, this, is, this is thin paper. If you've got any texture, It'll obviously show through when you stick your paper on. So I'm just using one of the Dixie Bell sponges, sanding sponges, which um, last quite a while. And they're not like a normal grit. It's like a, it's like a mesh. I really like these for standing in between coats. Um, could I do magic with wax? I, oh, I don't know. It's tiny. The gap is tiny. But I just feel like... I just feel like it would look better if I snipped a bit out. It's that big, can you see? Uh, that side. It's from there to there. It's a tiny gap to not fill, which is a bit annoying, but there we go. It's a bit, it, decoupage can be a bit fiddly. The good thing is these papers are actually really tough. So, um, not like, oh, I'm glad your dog's been sick, Donna, because at least you have to go. and You can't abuse me anymore. Um, these will take a bit. They're not like a napkin where it's really, really thin. So I have a brush which um, is cut less edge off. I could, but then there'd be a white board around it. And then I'd have to hand paint to match the pattern up. I ain't much of a hand painter, I'm not going to lie. We'll cross that bridge when we come to it. I'm just going to show you how I'm going to put it on with Gator Hide. So, Gator Hide dries super tough and it is also um, water, it repels water. Um, so, it's good as it is. It's the toughest top coat that Dixie Bell do, basically. Um, and I have tried decoupaging with the clear coat and uh, in satin, and I've also tried decoupaging with Gator Hide, and they both give slightly different results. This makes the paper more see-throughy, weirdly. So if you want, um, like I said, this is why I've done this white behind. If you use the satin, it's not quite as strong adhesive-wise. This sticks it and sticks it tough. So that's why I'm using this today. This brush is just a cheapo brush from the range. Uh, I think it was in a pack of three. Um, and I use it for things like slick stick and, um, you know, rubbishy stuff. Because I don't want to use my nice Dixie Bell brushes. Especially if I'm going to be gunking it up with, with Gator Hide. Right, so. Um, all you do is basically paint your Gator Hide on. Make sure you're getting it in all the edges. And corners because that's where it'll lift if you don't get it in there it'll start peeling back so you want to and it's it's a relatively thick layer that I'm putting on Like I say, just getting it in all the corners, 
making sure there's a good old <coughs> a good old layer of gator hide on so that should be enough i'm going to put that on the floor so that it doesn't drip everywhere then you line your paper up like so the good thing about gator hide is that it's got a fairly decent open time so some adhesives that i've used go sticky straight away and you can't do anything with it i can actually peel this off now so if i if i mess that up i could actually peel it off reposition it and stick it back down again so that's how tough the paper is and that's how um maneuverable gator hide is which is why i really like using it as a sticking medium so i've used mod podge before which i used to love but it does go sticky really really quickly so if i'd have put that on with mod podge here and then i tried to pull that off to reposition it it probably would have torn the paper next is cling film you call it something different in america tell me what it is and i make a little sort of like pad almost with cling film because obviously it's soft like i say this is just my way there is there are other ways and um basically make sure you see i'm i can still pull that off and reposition it if i want to um so it just lets you be a little bit more and i'm overlapping it on this lip a little bit more because what i can do is get a true edge with the peacock i can go in with an artist brush and and get that edge um, and then all i do is get my cling film and just smooth it you see i've got a wrinkle here i don't know if you can pick it up so all i'm going to do is just gently pull it off and the worst what, what the worst thing you can do is rip the paper and then you can just take it off sand it back uh, if it's dried and just put more paper on because decoupage is it is a bit fiddly and i'm not i'm not very patient at all plastic wrap is it saran wrap those kind of things so yeah just a little sort of like a little scrunch it up and and it just instead of your finger doing it which is obviously obviously there's texture on your finger and you might end up ripping the paper this just allows you to move over the surface, flattening it out, getting rid of the wrinkles. And this paper does have like a fiber that runs through it because it's a rice paper. So there is gonna be a little bit of that because I've put it on a white background, it's probably not gonna be as obvious if it was on a colored background. But there are little, I don't know if you can see it on, on you can see it on the back, look. Can you see the sort of like, they're not, they're not wrinkles in the paper. That's, that's like the fibres of the paper. It's just the style, it's just, the, it's just how it is, basically. Um, so now can you see why I put the white background on? Because if I'd have put something else behind here which is what i see quite a lot in decoupage people would you know some people would have painted that whole thing peacock and it does alter the color of the paper that you're putting over top especially if it's um like rice paper or tissue paper um or paper napkins even if it's a solid color and it looks a solid color on the background it can still affect the pattern when you've used your sticking medium because it makes it a little bit more transparent so and if you start to feel this is like dragging a little bit just find a clean bit of foil not foil plastic wrap cling film and just use a use a cleaner because it starts to pick up on a bit of damp gator hide coming through 
just take your time. It's not something that I'm very good at myself. Like I say, I'm not the most patient person in the world. Are you making me a brew? Not yet. Can I, can I have a cup of tea, please? Yes. Yeah. Is that better? Okay. So, and then make sure you've got in all your corners and your edges and they're flat. thicker the paper the less likely you are to get any sort of wrinkles so um, I know some people use wallpaper to decoupage um, personally it's not my bag again too fiddly so um, but yeah the thicker the wallpaper the thicker the paper the less likely you are to get wrinkles obviously thinner paper tends to you know you get wrinkles and stuff but that's why this is so good because if you do try and do it with your finger you're a nutter, thank you. Um, if you do try and do it with your finger, there is a good chance that that is going to rip. So if you just smooth it out with your cling film, it doesn't, it's less likely to rip, is what I'm saying. You still have to be careful. That's that. Whereabouts in North Wales are you? My Andy's um, family are from, uh, well, live in North Wales. Hi, Julie. Yes. Um, so I'm using Gator Hide to stick it on. So all I did is used a, um, a th fairly thickish layer. Not so it's dripping, but decent coverage of Gator Hide. I used an old brush. I get these in sets of three from the range. They're quite good. Um, applied that onto the surface and then laid my tissue flat, the rice paper flat, and used cling film or um, plastic wrap or saran wrap, whatever you call it. Um, and I just used that to flatten the surface out and get rid of any wrinkles. And that's really it. Um, have I missed any more? Hello, is that Shabs? Is that Sharina on? You never look at my lives. Um, in between Rill and Chester. Oh, really? Um, my other half's family live in Prestatin. Well, his sister and their family live in Prestatin, which is in between Rill and Chester also. Closer to Rill. It's not far from Rill. So, yeah, they live there. Interesting fact of the day. Um, so, that's pretty much it. And then all you do is continue that down um like with anything if you're joining it up it's going to be there's going to be a little tiny join the beauty of this paper is it's so thin the join isn't going to be as obvious if, if it was a thicker paper or you know like a wallpaper or something you're not going to get a, a seam um so i'm going to try and get as good a, a closer as i can match to to that seam and the pattern will continue down there. Um, yes, and then once it's dry... <coughs> yeah, I know you're far too busy, aren't you, Sharina, to be on Facebook in the show time. Um, so, once it's dry... Oh, you don't even have to wait till it's dry. You can you can put another coat of Gator Hide over the top for protection, which then seals the paper in, which if you want to then distress or wax over the top, it means that you've got that layer of protection over the top of the rice papers. Um, cheers, Sharina. So Sharina, who's on here with Shabby Nook, she's my friend that I was telling you about the other day, yesterday when it was, whenever it was, someone was asking me about my business and hello, Donna, back. Oh, I'm gonna have to ban you from my page. Um, I was telling you about the, the lady who's a paint stockist. It's her. So we were talking about you the other day. No problem, Sarah. You can watch me on replay. That's pretty much it, though, to be honest. Simple, isn't it? People make a big deal out of decoupage. It's not hard. And it makes it... These papers do make it truly, truly easy. Um, hurry up and get it finished. All right, Laura. We can't all speed paint like you. Some of us have got to, like, drip feed the content out. Um, 
yeah, so cover it over with gator hide. In fact, I can do it now. Um, because it's it's not going anywhere. Uh, just a thin, a thin coat of gator hide over the top, which helps seal it in. If you wanted to distress before you sealed it, you could do that. Um, it depends on the look that you want to go for. I don't want to distress this. We'll go in for a clean finish, but I am going to um, I'm going to add some some waxes over the top, just for a little bit of sort of age and grunge and depth. I'm not actually going to sort of sand it or anything in terms of uh, in in terms of making it rustic that way. So that's that. It's just a really, really thin layer. People are scared of gator hide. I see it time and time again in groups and people are like, oh, I can't hide. Oh, yeah. But um, it's all right. And I'm not like, I'm not a top coat queen or anything, but it's it's fine. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a grand product. So that's that. I can see a little bit there where there is a bubble or something. There we go. It's just the corner. Bubble under the corner. So that's it, pretty much. Um, does it, can you see a bit of a close up? I'm hovering the, the, the thing. Let me shift it up. There you go. So now you can see why the, the white background was so important. Plus, you are um, working with Gator Hide, which is a water based product. So again, why the boss was important to put on here, because as soon as I'd have top coated that uh, or put the gator hide on for the sticking medium, that would have, if it was just a white chalk paint and not boss, that would have pulled the tannins through and we would have had like a mucky brown tinge to this, which might look cool in some circumstances, but not uh, that's not the look I was going for on, on this particular one. So that's why I've used Boss as this for the stain blocking uh, properties. And then I, I just went straight over the top of the, the white Boss. I could have used a layer of put a chalk paint on here as, as well, like fluff or cotton, but um, I didn't. I went straight over the top with Boss. It works absolutely fine. So that's that. Um, and not too many interruptions with the kids. Other halves finally put the kettle on. You can't get the staff these days, seriously. Um, the difference between Gator Hide and PVA glue watered down, um, I haven't bossed them painted, no Sharina, this is just straight onto white boss, two coats of white boss because it was plying, ply board, pine ply board, I didn't want it to bleed through the decoupage, um, and then what was the point of putting white paint on, it's already white, so I just went straight over the top with boss, uh, on top of boss. Sorry, I went, started answering a question. Difference between Gator Hide and watered down PVA glue. So, not a massive amount, to be perfectly honest with you. Um, Gator Hide is a top coat from Dixie Bell, which is water re resistant, water repellent. So it's gonna offer more protection than PVA glue. But in terms of sticking medium, uh, it is gonna act similarly. The good thing about Gator Hide is that it's got quite a decent open time. So, like you saw, I, I peeled it back and stuck it back on where it was, you know, there was a bit of a wrinkle or whatever. PVA starts to go sticky quite quickly. Um, whereas Gator Hide, you've got that bit of open time for manoeuvrability if you do cock up or anything. But the, there are loads of sticky mediums. You don't have to use Gator Hide. It's just that, number one, I'm a brand ambassador for Dixie Bell, so I have Gator Hide, you know, in in um my cupboard and stuff um but i have previously used mod podge and like i say i've always got on quite well with mod podge uh but when i tried the gator hide method i did notice that like i say it stays um it stays open for longer so it doesn't start to immediately go tacky like mod podge dries i find really really quickly and it starts to to stick go sticky really quickly so there is absolutely no way if i cocked up on that and then how i peeled it off that probably would have ripped with mod podge because it, it does start bonding really really quickly whereas gator hide like i say it stays wet for longer if that makes sense i hope it does 
And you can also do this method with any of the clear coats from Dixie Belle. So the matte, the gloss and the satin. I've tried it with the satin. I find that it does a similar kind of job, but it's not as good a sticky medium as Gator Hide. But it still does the job. Um, so that's that. I hope that helps. So you've got the cling film, you've got the thing. Yeah, so I'm just going to carry on tiling this down. Um, uh, if you've got any questions, let me know. If you want to purchase any of the products that I've used today, apart from the cling film, that's out of my kitchen. You can't have that. Um, then they are in the link above my head. Part five and the final. Thank you. Oh, filled it right up to the top. Part five um, and the final part of this is going to be the waxing. Um, so I will be doing that. Let's see how we we'll get on with decoupage. I want to say tomorrow. What day are we on? What day is it? Is it Thursday? Thursday? Yeah. I could do it tomorrow. So how I should have had this done by then. I'll create another event on my page. Um when i when i'm a little bit further ahead with this because the kids are around and stuff today so who knows what can happen who knows so i'll carry on um i'll put some updates in my stories a little bit later on just to see how i am getting on with this bad boy i think i'll be okay until i've got to start doing this fiddly little bit here and then i might start getting cross so yeah part five waxing finishing off um, I'm going to do the top, I'm going to do some clear wax and black wax on the here and on the white panels on top of the parrots, so I've got to make sure that's completely dry as well. So I, like I say, I'll make an event, cheers for watching as always, it's been fun doing this on a live hasn't it? Um, and what I'm going to do I think is I'll probably upload all of these lives to YouTube if you wanted to watch them one after another um lord knows why i'd want to watch them again if you'd already seen them i think i'm probably enough uh i've had enough lives for one one week for you know get sick of me so but they will be it's not coffee it's tea it's not a bad brew it's not a bad brew you've got the job <laughs> go on go and do some work right so um <laughs> So, yeah, part five will be the waxes. Here he is. Here's the boy again. What are you up to? Playing. Okay. And I'll, I'll make I'll make an event in, the, in my page. So thanks for watching, as always. See you later. Have a nice day in the sunshine, whatever you're up to today. And I'll probably catch you tomorrow.